if I want to get PR easily in Canada, the best way possible, what I would do to do it. Okay, so if I were in your shoes, now I got my PR because of French, but if I were in your shoes, what I would do currently to get my permanent residency. Now, if you want to get PR the best way possible, okay, what is the best way possible? That means, okay, there are three criteria which we need to meet in order to uh, select any pathway as the best pathway possible for getting permanent residency. So first of all, not spending huge amount of money in that particular pathway. Okay, the second thing is no risk of things not working out. Okay, so if there is some pathway, which is very volatile, which may change anytime soon. Government may stop it anytime. That is what it means by volatility. If that's not going on, you know, that means that particular pathway is the best pathway. And third is actually that pathway helps you not only to get your permanent residency, but also give you a skill that you can implement in your career and get better paying jobs. Now, you know where I'm going with this, you know, but I'm going to uh, properly talk about each and every pathway and which would be the best for you. Now, who am I to talk about French? Okay, who am I to talk about this? Firstly, I'm not an immigration consultant. So take my words as a grain of salt. Okay, don't um, just listen to me, research it properly as well. But I'm going to talk about what I learned over the past five and a half years living in Canada. And I got my permanent residency by learning French. So that's why I have some knowledge on, you know, how can French benefit you for immigration and my uh, goal behind making these videos is so that I can raise the awareness on learning French and how to learn French to get permanent residency. Okay. When we talk about overall pathways in Canada to get your permanent residency, first, let me focus on, um, you know, uh, two of the most popular provinces, Ontario and British Columbia. This is where a lot of immigrant population is. It doesn't only apply to this, but overall Canada, if you want to get your permanent residency these days, options are becoming very difficult the, uh, the immigration department is filtering out a lot of different sort of career pathways in order to focus on only on those particular things okay so if you are in any province you will see that express entry draws which are you know applying which applies to every province the express entry draws are very high okay they're very high uh, when we talk about general draws firstly they are not you know really consistent and like there was a recent general draw happened which was after a very long time and even if they are coming they're very high Okay, close to 500s and more than 500s, which is which is not possible for everyone to get PR. Even if there are pathways, though the immigration department is uh, focusing more on those particular pathways, which is STEM, uh, nursing and healthcare, trade and agriculture and French. Okay, so these are the pathways that immigration is focusing more of their focus on. Apart from this, if you're in any other domain, it's very difficult for you to get PR. So if you're not in these pathways, what are the options for you? Okay, what are the things that you can do if you're living mainly in Ontario or British Columbia, but also in any other province? You usually have to go with the option of PNP or LMIA. Okay, but that is also definitely not possible these days. Why? Because firstly, PNP is very, very competitive because of huge influx of uh, immigrants and um, a high score of PNP as well. That is also becoming very difficult and the process, was, process is also very, very long. And secondly, LMIA. Now, it's not like, you know, employers are just giving LMIA and, you know, oh, if you're a good worker, you'll be able to get the LMIA. Oh, I'll, I'll be able to help you out with this. I have my friends. Okay. I have a lot of friends who, who serves as an example that how much money it costs to get a particular LMIA. Like so one of my friend has paid 34,000 something dollars to get an LMIA and he got his uh, 50 points for express entry. See, it's not like once you have the LMIA, you have the PR. You still have to put that profile, you still have to put those 50 points in your express entry profile so that you are able to get selected for PR. So LMIA, they accept the letter of LMIA only helps you get 50 more points, but it doesn't help you get PR. Eventually, you will still have to uh, get your uh, invitation through the express entry draws. He paid $34,000 for his LMIA to the employer. Again, this is a, you know, this is a scammy way of working behind the immigration. He paid it and then his LMIA expired. Now what? Okay, you paid $34,000. Now you're not even to get uh, invitation because the scores are very high. Even if you got 50 points, he, he came after 12th. Okay, so his score was around uh, before LMA, it was around 425. And after LMA, it was around 475, something like that. Okay, still he didn't got PR and he wasted his money. You get what I mean? So this is, this is the problem. And when we also talk about other provinces as well, now other provinces, it feels like it is easier to get PR in other provinces. But the problem with that is if you're moving from British Columbia or Ontario to those provinces, then it is difficult for you to get PR. Why? Because the other smaller provinces, they focus mainly only on the students, those who have studied 
uh, in those provinces during their study permit, making it easier for them. For example, Alberta. Okay, they focuses mainly on the students those who have graduated in Alberta, so that they are able to have permanent residency quicker. People those who are moving from uh, these bigger provinces to smaller provinces in the search of PR, that is also very difficult. That means now, what are the options that we have? Obviously, French. See. This is self-explanatory. You understand this. The only thing is you are not really pursuing that option because you still think French is not something for you. But now this is something that has to happen for you. You have to learn French. You know, talking from my own experience, if I would have not started learning French, I don't know if I really would have got PR in Canada or not because my score was very, very less. Even after best score in IELTS, I was only getting up to 430 points. After French, I got 496 points and because of which I got my express entry invitation. So something that I would recommend now, you know, when we talk about French, what are the options for French that you have? French category express entry draws. Now, all this information that I'm talking about, you will be able to go on my website as well and you'll be able to go on the immigration tab and I have cited the IRCC website and I have given the overall basic information so that you are able to see what is, you know, what are the things required for all the different provinces as well. Because French also helps in different provinces. So if you are from provinces like Alberta, New Brunswick, there are pathways for of French for you as well. So, okay, please make sure to go on my website and uh, look more into it. I would recommend from my website, go on to IRCC as well so that you are able to get a proper direction. So when we talk about the French pathways, first of all, in Express Entry Drop, uh, up after 31st May, francophone stream was announced okay which was one of the biggest category based draws in canada so firstly if we talk about french category express entry draws you know like previously as i mentioned you that immigration is focusing more on some particular areas one of them is french now for french there are french proficiency draws okay what happens in those is you need one year of work experience tier 0 1 2 3 that's obvious to you know uh, qualify for express entry with that you need clb 7 in french and if you have clb 7 in french then you will be able to get selected in French proficiency stream. Something which is very less competitive. Okay, if you see the draws, if you see the scores, you'll laugh. Like 420, 385, 390, something like that. That, that is what is going on. So I recommend you check it more on the IRCC website and also on my website to get the proper details so that you can see how, how easy it is if you know French and if you have cleared the exam with CLB7. You also have an option of Francophone Mobility Work Permit. Okay, now in this, you don't need CLB7, you need CLB5, but with this, you can extend your work permit. So what will happen is if you have CLB5 in French and you have a job offer and whatever the validity of the duration of the um, employment offer will be for that much time, your work permit will be extended. So you also have this option to extend your work permit if you're right on the brink of uh, expiring your work permit. Okay. <clears throat> you also have a lot of different other opportunities if you're from different provinces. For example, we have Quebec graduate stream. Okay. We have Sud Sudbury RNIP program, Saskatchewan immigrant nominee program. We have New Brunswick strategic initiative stream. We have an Ontario French speaking skilled worker stream, Nova Scotia labor market priority stream. So I really recommend you to read this more on my website so that you are able to see in detail how French will help you. But this is what I want to say. In every domain of the IRCC, everywhere, all over the provinces, French is somehow going to help you. This is why I tell you this is one of the best way, ways to get permanent residency. Why? Because you're not only learning French for immigration. It is also going to help you in future in your career to get better jobs and to get high paying jobs. Okay. And there is no risk of things not working out. Why? Because when we see the projected plans of IRCC in future in upcoming three, four, five years, they have even better plans for French. So that's the thing. And also you're not spending huge amount of money like LMIA, 30,000, $40,000. Okay. Whatever the tuition of French will be, obviously you will, you know, if you plan to go on uh, for French coaching that even if that's 5,000, okay, let's, let's take the highest number possible. Even that if that's 5,000, you compare, right? You will be having a skill that will help you to get better pay as well. You will also have your permanent residency quicker and you will know one of the world's most spoken languages. So you weigh out the pros and cons. Okay. So this is why I think that if you want to get PR easily, you should learn French. This is what I would do if I were in your place. And if you want to learn French, you can reach me out or you can start from my playlist on YouTube. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one.